I remember in high school, I I remember going to see my guidance counselor at times. Like he goes, "What's the matter?" I can tell him. I was like, I was like, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up, man. This is really messing with my brain. I feel like I should know what I want to be. And he goes, "It doesn't matter." I go, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "It doesn't matter, Anthony. You can be the janitor of a school or the president of the United States. You're gonna do it great because whatever you put your mind to, you're gonna be successful at. That's you have that. That's what you got. So don't worry about mm. anything. Just know that like whatever comes up." Whatever you decide to do, you're going to be great at. Teacher, stunt guy, actor, director, I mean, producer, you got this. I mean, it's just a matter of like doing it. One. So, Anthony, thank you so much for coming on with us. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you primarily, honestly, about all of your stunt work and how you got into the industry. And we also know that you are a part of this new movie, The Last Deal. And um, I want to talk about that, too. We were obviously got the opportunity to see it early, which we're very happy about. So we got to keep the spoilers on the down low. But um, we're very impressed specifically with your performance in that movie. I think we, you did a really good job. And, you know, Johnny and I were discussing that um, you could 100 percent like you hold a movie very well. But the the first thing before we get into too much about uh, the last year, I want to ask how you even got involved in um, stunt acting and stunt work. Like, how did that start for you? Yeah. Um, so like after graduating college, I, I came up with a career that I, I fell in love with, um, which was teaching. I taught for like about nine years. Most of the time was in uh, the preschool level. And then I started teaching. My last year was fourth grade special ed. It was a behavioral disorder classroom, Martin Luther King, Worcester, Massachusetts. That's where I grew up. So I was going home after teaching around the country and just to start my career at teaching. And uh, one day I wrote on the board, what do you want to be when you grow up? Kid raises his hand. He's like, Mr. M, I don't know what I want to be. I'm only nine years old. I'm like, oh, that's a good point. Okay, all right. Well, if you could be anything today as a nine-year-old, what would you want to be? He's like, come on, Mr. M, I don't know what I want to do. I said, come on, Kenny, just write your paper, please. He's like, you always talk about the crocodile hunter. Write about like working with reptiles or something like that. Just write your paper. He goes, all right, fine, Mr. M. I'll write my paper if you tell me what you wanted to be when you were nine years old. I was like, come on, Kenny, serious? He goes, I'm serious. I'll write it. I swear. I go, okay. Uh, oh, I know. I would have wrote about the fall guy. Hollywood stuntman jumping off buildings, driving fast cars, getting into fights. That's what I would have wrote about. He goes, you want to be a stuntman? I go, write your paper. <laughs> like, about a week goes by and he goes, hey, Mr. M, check it out. I go. What are you doing, man? You're not supposed to print anything off the computer without permission. You know that. He goes, just look at it. Stun school. Where'd you get this? He goes, the internet, Mr. M. Get with the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Funny, Kenny. I'm cool. I, I love being a teacher. Yeah. And it sat on my desk for like a week. And then I just, I called. And they were like, yeah, we got one spot left. I go, you guys take credit cards? And I was like, you know what? Why not? I was like, it's a summer thing. I'll go out there, have a little extreme fun. And then I found myself driving down to LA afterwards and uh, starting the career at the bottom, doing background work, 49 bucks for eight hours. Did that for about a year. Once I got out of the non-union, got into union, it slowed down a lot. And I started PA and hustling and training with all the guys. And then after about four or five years, you start getting jobs. And that's how I started. I ask, other than the fact that like, it's the coolest thing to say when people ask what you do for a living, being a stuntman. Why did you want to do it when you were, when you were growing up, and you know, and after you grew up as well? I, honestly, I didn't. That, that was, it was like I, I did not think that the stuntman career was really. I mean, when he asked me as a nine, <laughs> what I would think, I was just thinking about what I used to watch. Dukes of Hazzard, yeah. the Fall Guy. I was like, oh man, I love the Fall Guy. So like, I guess I would have wrote about something that I thought was not even real as make believe. And I, it was when I was teaching in San Francisco, I was teaching a preschool inclusive classroom and I had to wait tables. So I was only making 275 bucks a week teaching preschool, but I was waiting tables at um, this place called Chapino's down on Fisherman's Wharf. One time I come out from on my break, the guy goes, Hey, hey stop. Hold on. we got a shot going. I'm like, what shot? Going? What are you talking about? And I'm, a yellow Camaro comes ripping around the corner. Whoom, and goes flying. I'm like, what the, fuck? I was like, Hey, is, who's, who's driving that car? They're like stunt guys. I'm like, <laughs> wait, wait, that job really even exists? And they're like, you pay them to do that? They're like, we pay them good. I go, you pay them good. And you that was him. the first he did ever sat in my head. That was like when I was, uh, I don't know, 26. Mm. And like, that was a couple of years before I went home and met Kenny. And um, that, yeah, I, and my buddies, were hurt. I told my buddy, I go, hey man, 
they got a job occupation, they call it stuntman. They were just like, Mo and I, that is you. You were born to do that. I go, why would you say that? He goes, how'd you get in the house today? You said you climbed up the pill. I had to go through the window because you had no <laughs> key, right? I go, yeah. He goes, that's a fucking stuntman, man. Come on. Oh, excuse my language. But yeah, that was like, oh. Yeah, but yeah, we, we that was that was kind of, um, I, I never really grew up saying, oh man, I really want to be Lee Majors now. No, no. I, I didn't even really know what I wanted. I knew in college I wanted to be a teacher. I could go back to teaching today and be the happiest guy. Mm. Yeah, I love teaching. I love that. My my, my father's a, a teacher. He's um he started out as I think a substitute. No, a coach. He started out as a wrestling coach. Um, a lot of my families are, are, are teachers. It's um and it's a, and it's a gift. Especially you said you were special. Uh, you were with special needs students. Yeah, I, I discovered in San Francisco because we I worked in an inclusive classroom. And so we had like 22 regular ed kids and then 10 special ed kids. Gotcha. Um, and we had a team of like regular ed teachers, which I was a part of. And then they had a team of special ed teachers, but the special ed teachers every day would be like, you have a gift with special ed kids. I was like, you know, I'm kind of on the same level. I think that's how we <laughs> relate so well. And she's like, whatever it is, she goes, you're, you have a real gift on, on working with them. You should think about going to special ed. And I never really thought much about it until like I got back to Worcester and they offered me, they came over and said, they pulled me out of the orientation. I go, hey, we got a classroom that we can slide you into right now. I go, great. To like, it's fourth grade. I go, no way. Absolutely not. I don't do fourth grade. I'm primary. And she's like, we'll pay you $500 a week. I go, I will take that job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, yeah, that's what got me started in the fourth grade. So it seems like everything that you've done in life, it's almost like you've fallen upon it and you've been just talented at everything. And you've taken that talent and turned it into like a, a real skill. And it's kind of nice hearing that when people, when you said your friends or whatever saying, Oh, that job is for you. Or when you, that your employer is like, Oh, you, you should, you should do special needs. It's kind of cool that everything, at least so far as we've heard everything you've done, you've kind of fallen upon and you've been talented at it. Naturally good. Naturally, at it. just naturally good at it. Is, is that been your experience with everything? Like what's something that you're like, Oh man, this was, this was rough to learn. Oh God. Well, acting. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, like, this is like, I, this is the last place in the world I was wishing to be. I mean, because when I was doubling, like, when I was working with Clooney on the, my, one of my first big jobs was like doubling Clooney and he partied with, like, we'd go out all the time and he would get mobbed. And I'm like, and I'd look at my actor friends because I'm just Clooney stunt double, but I was like, I'd look at my actor friends like, this could be you. Is this really what you want? This is crazy. And they're like, ah, this will never be me. I said, but it could be if you got, if you were the best and we all want to be the best. And so I never really thought that that would be something that I just loved the magic of stunts. I love like not being seen. I love that. Like you can go in there, everyone claps after you're done doing a great gag and they clean up your mess and they pay you to come and dress up That's and awesome. relive your childhood memories of being like a gangster, a boxer, a policeman, a military guy. And then you get paid for it. I was like, this is brilliant. I wouldn't want it any other way, but you can only take so many shots to the head and hit so many grounds <laughs> and do such, I mean, I, I've been blessed. I'm like, I, 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 my career has been very successful. And I think you want more after you become where well, you feel like the limit is you've reached your limits kind of. And you're like, I, I got to grow on, go climb something else. And that was the acting mountain in front of me right now. So can I ask, cause when I was in high school, I, there was a movie I used to watch like every day, be, like after I came home from school and it was called the fighter. So when Mark told me, hey, you want to go talk to the, uh, this guy? I go, yeah, I'll go talk to Shane here. Are you kidding me? Because I've seen that movie so many times. And I was surprised was to learn that you didn't have an Irish or Scottish accent. I'm like, this guy's from, like, Massachusetts? Yeah. Uh, how that, is the cra that was a crazy story, man. That was how crazy. did that come about? How did that trend? Because that was, like, sort of your first, you know, brush with acting. Yeah. Or that was a pretty big role if it was, when it was one of your first. Right? How did that start? Yeah. It, it, I, so it started on that same Clooney set that I mentioned to you before. Uh, called Leatherheads, and I was reading the trade. I was reading like our breakdowns. We got a breakdown. And I was reading the breakdowns, and they said they're going to do a movie on Mickey Ward. I go, what? Mickey Ward? Mickey Ward's like our local hero. Growing up as a kid, he was the boxer. Of, like he's just two towns over. So I'm like, I'm getting on that movie. And at the time, it read uh, Brad Pitt and Matt Damon. Those were the two leads, and it was going to be a hundred million dollar movie. And then. Four years later, it became a $25 million movie with Mark Wahlberg and Christian Bale. And, and I remember following it and calling the guy who was running and be like, hey, I, I, I want to get on this movie. He goes, 
well, you know what? I need a boxer. I need a, but Mark only wants to use real boxers. He's not down with stunt guys. I go, look, just, just get my picture in front of him. He goes, send me a picture. I send him a picture. He goes, they think you're too small. Get bigger. So I send him another picture. He goes, they think you're too big. I go, okay, <laughs> listen, you know what? <laughs> They're obviously confused. Just get me in front of them. And so he gets me, he goes, okay, we're going to Mark's house tomorrow. I'll come up to Mark's house tomorrow. I'm going to just show him. Cause I think you're dead on for Shay. And I go, okay. So I go up there and yeah, Mark was like, yeah, you're the guy we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. And then he comes in the next day. That was crazy. Comes in the next day, we're sitting there and we're just getting warmed up and we start getting in the ring. And then uh, David O. Russell, the director gets there and he's like two hours late. Mark's like, hey, nice to show up. And he kind of has an outburst. And, and I thought to myself, I go, you know what? I don't think I, I just got done telling myself on the Clooney show that like, this is the way to make movies, having fun, no conflict. You know what I mean? Half day Fridays, mm. we're busting our butt. We're having a great time. This is so fun. We're making movies. And then you go into like this talk, you can get into some toxic situations. And I just saw the potential for a toxic situation that I was going to put myself to that I just didn't feel like was what I wanted. And so I was like, oh, you know what? When they come back in, I'm going to tell them I'm not available. I'm going to tell them like, hey, I'm sorry, but something came up. It's not even been in 24 hours. I'm not available. But then in my mind, I was like, you asked for this. You asked for this four years ago. And now here it is in front of you. And you're going to walk away from it? No way, man. You get to go through this. You get to figure out how to deal with this kind of situation. And it was great. And come to find out, like, I mean, it was the best thing for me because it made me grow tremendously. And... And I saw a genius that way. I mean, he, David O. Russell's a highly intelligent man. And, uh, and like, yeah, some communication issues, but like highly intelligent, very creative, very, and I don't know what was a game and what wasn't a game, but he brought out a great performance to me. He brought out a, <laughs> I mean, I studied Shade Neary so hard. And then when I came out of the tunnel in front of like 6,000 people with a bunch of my family out there, low, he <laughs> I do exactly what Shay does. I come bouncing out and he's screaming over the thing. Cut, cut, you idiot. No, <laughs> you do not bounce. And I'm like, I mean, this is like, I'm like, and, oh, okay. I mean, this is like lights are going on, right. flickering. It's, it's like, like God yelling the, at you. <laughs> and then stop, just, just, I'm walking out of time. I'm like, okay, go back. I cut it in half, right? I'm not going to go. So I kind of just come out with a light. Hey, Cut, cut, no, stop. What is wrong with you? Can you under just walk out of the town? Come out, cut it in half again. No, cut. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh. God. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to walk out of the town. And I did, and it looked great. You know what I mean, like, it might have not have been what Shay did, but he was getting me to what's going to cinematically look more powerful for what mm. he did. And so, I mean, a lot of times these guys don't tell you anything. I mean, and that's how that interview was. Like I walked in never doing lines with them before and they had cameras on their shoulders when I walked in and I was like, what is this? I don't even know the lines yet. And David comes up to me, he goes, hey, so there's me, Mark Wahlberg, Christian Bale. Um, oh, what's that brilliant actress out there? She, uh, and the other one, the moms. Oh, uh, 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 Melissa Leo. Melissa Leo, Amy Abs are all out there for this interview for us, this post post uh, interview. And he David comes over and he goes, uh, so what do you think you'd say? I go, what do you think I would say? I was like, in oh front of everyone, gosh. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'd say I'm I'm training, like I guess I'm training hard and stuff like that. I don't know what he goes, yeah, yeah. Say, say that, say that you're training hard, and then say you're looking forward to get onto other fighters like da 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 da. And I was like, Holy shit, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Okay, wait one second. I was like, so, but say it in a, a cock accent. I'm like, does that sound like Worcester? Is that like a Worcester accent? Because I'm from Worcester. I don't know what a cock accent, whatever you said. That. <laughs> and then, uh, and then they're like, come on. And I see the camera guy just depressed. And I'm like, what's going on here? He goes, no, no, come on, say it the way I'm saying it. And I'm like, okay, um, okay. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah, chain, chain hide. And then Christian jumps in after he starts yelling. He goes, hey, David, why don't we just, why don't we write it down on a piece of paper and then we go work out the lines and then come back and shoot it. And I was like, Oh my God, thank you so much. And he's like, yeah, good idea, Christian. You, no, you know what? Let's just roll. Let's just try. Oh my Let's gosh. Try. And I was like, you're not even going to, you, you, your bamboozling. You've, I, so I just was like, 
I just kind of like went into this pissed off state and it was perfect again. I don't know. (laughs) It played off well. I never thought it was going to make the movie because I was like, he obviously isn't going to use this because he would have put something more into it. I mean, he obviously has a plan and the plan is I'm not going to use this. So let's just shoot it. And I was like, wow, I can't believe I got set up like this. And (laughs) again, he brought a, it was brilliant. Like I, I, I love that little performance. I mean, it's one of my favorite yeah, out of all of it, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, it was, it was memorable to me. I've seen it like a hundred times. Now. It like my favorite times. moment is when you guys are posing, you try to fake him out with a punch, and then Christian yeah. Bale just gives you the finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah, that's Dave. I mean, I'm sure that's David. That's David. Yeah. He's Jesus, like uh, bringing in some stuff. Yeah, he, I saw him at an after hour party, an Oscar party, and my friend goes, Hey, there's your friend David O'Reilly. Like, oh, he'll never remember me. And I'm like, Anthony, Anthony, come here. I'm like, <laughs> This is crazy. He goes, hey, you were my favorite part of the movie. I go, I was? He goes, yeah. He goes, he goes that look, the look at the beginning, that look you gave Mark, he goes, I have a pit bull and I've seen that look oh, before. Man. That was the look, man. It was my wow. favorite part. I'm like, oh, great. That's great. I'm just glad you don't remember my name. I didn't think you remember my name. No, he was great. He's great, man. He's, he's an interesting, yeah. Very and, special director. And you, uh, you don't have any... Or do you have any formal uh, combat training? No, no, no. I mean, I grew up in Worcester, if you call that combat training. Okay, uh, yeah, sure, that counts. But the only reason, the only reason I ask, right, is because um, how much, how much is, when you, could you just tell the whole story about how it's like, it's, hey, we're just going to do it. If it looks good, we're going to keep it in the movie. If it looks bad, we're, we're pulling it out. So you just, that was your whole story just now. It was awesome. But when it comes to things where you actually have to practice movements, how long does it take to practice, like, choreography or just like hey i'm about to get pushed into a wall or thrown off of this or how long does it take to actually perfect that before you're like all right let's shoot it yeah um well you're only everyone has their limits so you can only get it to a certain point before you kind of like you're just getting small increments so you got to kind of and this business is all about how fast can you do something really good and if you're really good at that then you're that's that's a pretty good tool to have in your toolbox as far as being successful in the business um but if it's an ex like you can go from like the fight that mark and i did we shot in a day which was insane because it was a pretty big fight in the movie it was a, it was a pretty large portion of the movie and but we rehearsed it for five weeks up at his house so that choreography and training conditioning and all that stuff was done in five weeks um so it could be something like that for a fight or you can be like, you can go on set and like, and put together like maybe like a 10 piece fight pretty quick on TV yeah. shows and so forth. So um, to me, the rehearsals are really not so much about the choreography because stuff changes so quickly in this business, but it's more about the chemistry. Gotcha. Look in each other's eyes, seeing your reads, dancing with each other, these two people like creating music, how the longer you can stay and dance together, the better the music you can create. So that's to me what's really uh, ne- the the most crucial part of like the rehearsals. Yeah, is just finding that chemistry with your uh, fellow actor. Um, yeah, and and you kind of touched with, touched on that a little bit with um with working with directors. How it's like at the end of the day, they know what they want. They know what they want to do, and <clears throat> you're not in their head, so you kind of have to trust them. And I talk about that uh, pretty frequently with uh, my peers about um, working with directors, working with people that have a vision. And when you're working with a director or whatever. Do you like for them to like you know, paint a picture for you, or do you like when they say, "Oh no, you you do whatever you think is right, and we'll figure it out later"? Like, what do you prefer? Oh, yeah, like I don't want to know nothing. Okay, don't tell me any. Like, okay, uh, yeah, the best ones that I worked with, my like Christopher Nolan, like I, I'm still confused on what I did. I'm like, <laughs> like I, I'm still like a little lost. I'm like, I was like, what just happened? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but, but what I, what I, what was very successful for me in creating a relationship with him was that I took these risks and like, like these, for example, like, like I went into the trailer and I was like, okay, what's going on? What's going on? And then they brought my wardrobe and I put on like, oh, look at this. So like, I, I work at an airline. I'm like the guys that are like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like doing the flashlights. I'm like, okay, okay, this is good. Let me get this on. I put it on. And I go over to the sides and I start reading the sides. I put my glasses on and I look up and I'm like, oh, oh, that's it. Oh, it's the glasses. You got to wear the glasses. And I'm like, oh, you can't wear them. You can't wear the glasses. 
There's no way they're going to let you wear the glasses. You're doing these crazy stunts. There's no way. Oh, just, you know what? Just wear them. Screw it. Just wear them. It's a Christopher Nolan movie. They're going to they're gonna pay attention to yeah. every little detail. They're going to either say, hey, what is this fool doing? Get the glasses off. So no problem. It's that easy. But instead, nobody told me to take the glasses off. And so the first shot's about to go of a three-week shoot of me like, yeah, we're, 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 we're knocking guys out, fighting in a plane, jumping out of the plane, and then crashing a plane into a, into a building off the tarmac and like yeah i'm like are you really oh shit. they're like rolling i'm like oh no oh no oh no am i really gonna do this am i gonna go through this take the glass off no and action okay that's it the glasses are on we're set oh no here we go we got it oh here we go <laughs> wow. and it was nuts it was nuts what was even crazy was that i found the glasses on the ground they were like some <laughs> reading glasses that i had in my bag and so like then i thought about it because the next day i had to go meet my wife in vegas and i staggering because we worked all night and the cabbie goes hey you left your glasses in the car and i go oh my god there's only oh no this was props didn't give it to me so we don't have five pairs of glasses right like i have these so then i'm trying to read what kind it was and see if i can buy another one online i couldn't even read anything i'm like oh my god i don't oh, even know shit. what to do i said you just can't lose that so for three weeks it was like crazy glasses sitting babysit oh my job. Gosh. the day i got home i'm cleaning them and snap i broke the frame on them. i'm like shit. oh my god Holy shit, <laughs> bro. It happened. and that was right after and you my, were finished yeah oh and it was god. funny the day before that my boss goes hey christopher nolan was asking about you i go what he goes yeah he was asking him about you he said hey where'd you get anthony i said he's a stunt guy he goes well, then you guys are lucky because he's not a stunt guy. And he goes, what do you mean? He goes, who told him to wear the glasses? And he goes, did you tell him to wear the glasses? And my, my boss goes, no, I didn't tell him to wear the glasses. I didn't think so. He goes, you know what? He made some choices on Rohan that I, I, didn't, I thought was great. And wow. some guys out there, some guys, you know what, George, some guys have it and some guys don't. And Anthony, Anthony's got it. And I was like, George, don't screw with me, man. Don't tell me this. It's like He's like, no, that's what he said. He had. I said, can I tell Anthony? He goes, don't tell him until he raps. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was just, and again, like throughout that process of that shoot for those three weeks, I just made these small little risk-taking choices to like not really ask for permission because the second you ask for permission, no, no, no. Right. I didn't come up with that. I, I want that to be my, but you just do it and you Hey, look at you face the consequences if it's a screw up, but then again, if it's a if it's a if it's a triple, you like you got a triple, yeah. you know what I mean? Like or, or a double or a single, but you're just looking to hit base hits to kind of like make things kind of a little bit more rich. And it's it's crazy how you just a so such a small change was able to be noticed by like like Nolan on that movie, had, like they're what they were crashing a pla- a real plane into a air hanger he has to figure yeah. out how all the time works and stuff and you were able to make that small decision that <laughs> he to figure out the that time. he that he noticed there was still enough for him to notice it's crazy oh yeah crazy. it was crazy and then that's it then now it's a relationship yeah right so now we have a relationship so now he knows my name my boss goes hey we're doing oppenheimer it's cr-. he goes it's crazy he goes i mentioned chris i said chris you want to bring anthony out for this in case you-. he goes oh that'd be great just especially if i want to throw him a line or something like that i, can- I know anthony can handle a line so then it's like that that's how it is right same thing happened to me on barry my buddy goes hey you want to audition for this yeah i'll audition for it and this was like five years ago and it was like right when i first started wearing glasses and i go <laughs> i was like store manager clerk okay you know what i'm gonna wear the glasses i've never worn glasses for an audition i'm gonna wear them and i wear my glasses for the audition and i get it and i wasn't really present because i hadn't heard of barry and i didn't know I, I knew bill was kind of a sad live guy but I'm stocking the shelves on the first take and I'm stocking it and, they go, and I drop a, a bag of Cheetos and I look at him, I look at the bag and I reach out and grab it and put it up and they say cut. And he goes, Hey, did you do that on purpose? I go, what? Drop them or pick them up? <laughs> he goes, both. I go, well, I definitely meant to pick it up. I didn't mean to drop it. He goes, that was good. He goes, that was <laughs> wow. good, man. He goes, I mean, just, yeah. So it was, um, I don't know. Yeah. It's interesting. I think you just kind of, the more you can let it come without thinking about it, the way I look at it, a director's job is to have their their guys not knowing, like on their toes. Mm. Sorry. Um, did I lose you there? No, 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 no. Um, it's to have the on their toes. Like 
the way I think about it is like if you're walking, you ever have someone kick your leg from behind and trip you? Yeah, I do it all. The time. He never walks in front in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for that reason alone. <laughs> but like, yeah, that moment of like not knowing where you are and being tripped, and that was what like that's what I feel like some of the great directors do. They mm. constantly want their actors in there, not knowing anything that's going on, so they they can just organically figure it out. And, and trip them up as much as they can because some of the best stuff comes up from trips mm. like in the last deal like we were like we were stumbling all day on this scene out in the farm and it was like we know the story a, yeah john told us about this oh my god oh, it was the longest ride home <laughs> my mind was shot to i was just so broken and i was just like what just happened <laughs> i was like what just happened as yeah. a disaster and then like from and then like it all it, it ends up being like what a beautiful scene what some of the coolest cinematic shots and so sometimes like the, all those trips and fumbles and stumbles are like some of the little gifts that we get to have those are the ones we really hope for in the movies yeah mm -hmm. well you you were talking about how um when you went into the fighter you were even though you followed through with it and it was great you were like had the mindset where it was like, this is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be great. And, and it's supposed to be energetic and we're just having a good time. And I feel like a lot of young actors and actresses, they, um, they're kind of afraid to do something that the, unless the director says to do it, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it, it kind of is an art, you know, you're right. It's like, you kind of just have to, you have to, you know, just whatever happens, wherever you, um, stroke the brush, it's just, if it doesn't work to let you know, it doesn't work. I feel like a lot of people kind of put themselves in a box and wait to be told. And maybe for some directors, you kind of need to do that. But otherwise, what, what, do, you, what do you think? You think it's it's better, right, to just let it go and be told afterwards? It's it's like, it's so, it's interesting. Um, a lot of people, because like I was really good at hustling and a lot of guys used to ask me. But I think it all comes down to instinct. It's reading the room. It's knowing who they are, what how they perform. Do your homework. You know what I mean? Like, ask the right, like, figure make decision, make choices. But like, yeah, on the day after you do all that work, you just gotta throw it all out the window and yeah. kind of just be like, all right, where, what's it smell like? Where am I? Am I, get, I like senses. I, what I've discovered in the last year or two with studying acting is that like my senses, like practicing, getting, smelling, seeing, tasting, touching, like going, experiencing the room. I get more in touch with it. I can get more present with it. Cause that's what it's all about. Like, what get present with the room right now so that I can let go of all that information. I just mm. know that it's there and it's just going to instinctually come through me when the time is right. And yeah. I'll be able to make those choices based off of what all the back work that I kind of done. Yeah. I think, I think, was it, I think it was the director, Mike Nichols, who was like, you prepare and you prepare and you prepare and then you get on set and you throw it all away. Something oh, like that. Yeah. 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 And that's what Bill was saying in this last scene because I cannot believe he brought me back. Yeah, so after that little store clerk, he made me the bad guy. So I, I was a reoccurring <laughs> all through season three. And then after season three, I wonder, yeah, I shouldn't say this. Okay, <laughs> see? see? Yes, because yeah. I do care. <laughs> I'm not going to say this, but like, let's just say in that experience, Bill was like, Hey, look at man, I write this stuff, but I have no idea until I get here on a day on how it's all going to come together. Like, I, this is the vibe, and that was my experience of what he was saying. It was like, this is like, like this is the this is the the purpose of the scene, but like, it all can be transformed when you're there, and all of a sudden it's a cloudy day, and birds are chirping, there's dogs walking, and now this all has to be transformed, just chiseled out a little bit differently than maybe the way I wrote it, yeah, because of the setting. So yeah, we're constantly kind of adapting to the moment. You know, we, we just um, reviewed a movie called Babylon, and um, it talks about the, how the industry changes and it goes through ebbs and flows. And what you just said reminded me how, like, it, you know, it's it's a gigantic mess, but at the, by the end of it, it looks so good. Like, everyone's kind of freaked out a little bit. Everything changes, but that by the end, you got a perfect picture. Oh, great. How, was Babylon good? Did you oh, guys like oh. it? Oh, yeah, I thought it was great. We thought it was incredible. You got to see it, man. It's so good. Fantastic. Yeah, my buddy called me to work on it. I wasn't available, but I was a play a taxi cab driver. But his name is Doug Coleman, and he is a genius, man. He's a what a great, yeah, what a what a great uh, second unit director, stunt coordinator in our business, man. He's yeah, the details, like <laughs> the little details, can go so far. The splinters make such a big difference. Mm. 
that's my favorite thing to strive for. Because once you do all that work and you have a good foundation, good health, now you get to pick. Now, depending if you have the time, you get to pick the colors, the, yeah. the, the finishing touches and the little splinters. And that's when it really pops. Wow. And that's when it really pops. And that was what was so challenging about the last deal. Because it was such a low budget movie, um, I was like, I was doing hair, makeup, wardrobe. Wow, God bless those head of those apartments because I would. It was so challenging because like we were we were all filmmakers on this together. We were all asked to put on a lot of different yeah. hats because mm. it was such a small crew because it was such a sensitive time because of COVID. We shot it right in the middle of COVID. And how, how did you meet uh, John? Um, I have a really good friend, Carl, um, and Carl introduced me to Jonathan. He's a second year director that had, he had done some of Jonathan's movies in the past years. I think he'd known him for like six or seven years and done a couple of his movies. And, and then, um, yeah, Carl Safarlio, he was like saying to me, he goes, Hey, I got a director who's looking for an action actor. I put your name in, you might get a phone call. And then sure enough, Johnny calls me. Uh, I read the script. We, we 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 choose to go forward. Carl also the coordinator and producer in that movie as well. So we're all a part of it. And that, that was one of the most refreshing things is like like I mentioned, I saw you as like Shane Neary in the fighter. And over the years I've seen you like ever since like the fighter, you've been popping up in all these movies. Like I tell my parents, like, hey, I'm interviewing this guy. He was in this movie and this movie. They're like, oh shit. And like you got <laughs> you headbutted, I think Jesse Plemons and Black Mass, and you got choked out by Ooh. Tom Cruise. And Tenet, you had that nice moment where you, you took the bar of gold and put it in your jacket there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh yeah. so it was very refreshing to see you in this in this movie, The Last Deal, be able to you have a whole movie to show us what you can do and kind of carry it and prove that you can carry a movie like solo, basically. So it was really refreshing to see that. Yeah. I appreciate that. That means a lot. Yeah, that was um yeah, I was scared. I, I still am scared. But like, I mean, that was just, I, well, I mean, I was like, I don't, I mean, I don't want to waste somebody's money. <laughs> like, I've never yeah. done, I've never done a leading role before. So I, there was a lot of like, uh, yeah, I look at, I, I always like to, I know what I'm capable of. And I know if I put my mind to anything, I can, I can, I can do it. It's just, and that's what made, that motivated me to move forward with this. Cause I knew that like, I had it within me. I just, I just, it's, it was brand new. So I was scared. I've never, ever been the lead. So I, I was, um, yeah, I was. And then there was another part of me. I kept thinking like, this is never going to get made with like the way we're shooting this and how we're going to, with the money involved. I'm like, this is a good chance that nobody ever sees this. <laughs> yeah. So there was, um, and then there was another part of me where like Jonathan said, he goes, Hey, you're going to be a star. And I go, what? No, mm. let's, let's, <laughs> so let's just, uh, let's just, Let's get to day one. <laughs> but yeah, it was um it was a it was a great experience. I couldn't have asked for a better director and a better DP. I mean, these guys, they made me look good. Jonathan is Jonathan's the real deal. Jonathan is the quadruple, like yeah, <laughs> threat. He does it all. Like the writing, the directing, the the eighteen, the 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 like the the editing, I mean, he, the core, I mean, he just, the trailers, the, the, the business deals. He was a, he is a true filmmaker. Yeah. Yeah. And at, at that stage, you kind of have to be too. I mean, like yeah. Johnny and I, a while ago, just talking about how democratized uh, filmmaking has become and how it continues to become that way. Cause you can do all of it in your bedroom. You can do it now. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And we talked to Jonathan and what a, what a, you know, wealth of knowledge, you know? Um, yeah. And the way he spoke to us was very, very like, very friendly where it's like, you like, we actually learned something from him. It was incredible. And it was, we were very happy we interviewed him. And by the way, equal time, the second you opened your mouth, I was like, this guy's a fucking actor. Like he's, you have so much energy, bro. I was like, oh, oh. this is going to be so easy. This is awesome. You're just oh you're great man no I, I yeah I get nervous with these things because sometimes uh I, again because like I try not to think too much so sometimes just stuff comes I'm like oh god no, you're I great. Just but I I'm practicing that and uh and that was another big thing I learned on the set of the last deal was like you gotta be these days it's very tricky out there you gotta be very conscious I mean you and so there's a fine line of like controlled chaos yeah. <laughs> like letting stuff out but like at the same time, knowing that, like, hey, there's some sensitive times right now, so, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Mm. Can I yeah. can I ask because we talk we're talking about how this is like your first you know, lead role. How did the way you prepare for a role or or anything like you had to prepare for, to be in like two pages in some previous roles or something like that? But then you read like you know I mean on oh, tenant one page two pages and then last deal oh ninety seven <laughs> pages like how do you adjust to something that big? I mean the my strategy was this: it's a story. They're all stories. Even a short story or a long story, there's still a story. So, like, my goal always, what, my first goal in tackling this approach was this, like, hey, know the story. Learn the story inside out. You know what I mean? And then once you get that and, and keep saying it to people as much as you can so that, so that it becomes, you, now you create these moments and these characters and like all this stuff. You start experiencing it. You start feeling it. Like, there's almost a an experience that goes through it. So like the more I told the story, the more I started feeling the experiences that this guy was going through. And then it was after I did that, then it's easy to kind of like go back and connect dots and do a backstory and have a brother and what that brother's relationship was. And then like, and then like, but then it's also trans it's, it's also transforming on the day. Like I remember we were doing this, this love scene and I was like, I go, Hey, you want me to lose the, the, the style of David? And he goes, no, it's fine. It's keep it. I was like, oh, great. And now I'm like, wait, Vince is Jewish? How, when did he become Jewish? Now I, yeah, like, yeah. Put it that way. He used that, oh, he converted to Judaism then. And that, that it was like the temple that saved his life by like, by going to, the, so then I just, so you're, like I said, you're constantly kind of transforming as new things start to arise with the story. Mm -hmm. So the story goes on well after it's been written. But what a, what a, yeah, Johnny did a great story. It was a very, what, what really attracted me to it was like it was a simple story with a lot of rich colors. That's what was so attractive to it. You didn't right away start to like do like line reading and, and like acting. Most of it was the stunt work at the beginning. When you started to like really act, how did you go about learning like learning the craft? Like when were you like okay, I got to start doing some like background work for these characters? Like what was the development? of your like career or your journey in acting? Like how do, how do you, when did you make the decisions and why did you make the decisions to study your characters the way you did? I, I think the more I got interested in it, as, as I started realizing more and more that like the, the less desire to do stunts and the more desire to like find out what my next avenue was, whether that be like, which was the typical one is stunt coordinating. And I started doing that and I started realizing I didn't have that much passion for it. And, and then, then now looking at the acting inside and see like, oh, wow, you know what? This is, this is the road. Yeah. This is what feel, this, this one feels right. Okay. We're going to stick to this one until it doesn't feel right. And I want to say that started right around the fighter. I mean, it was, it was a nice introduction because I was studying someone who already existed. Mm -hmm. Somebody that this, this event already happened. So I was like, I was reenacting a document. It was like almost very documentary too. So that was a nice way to get introduced to this acting world. So like I had already these, this, these, these minimal decisions that I had to make, um, which I come to find out like, like, like David showed me like, no, let's, it doesn't have to be the exact enactment. We, we want to, we want to make this richer. So mm -hmm. what choices can you make? And so I think that's what I learned in my first one where I started saying, oh, you know what? Let's, let's create more of a background. The richer you can make this person, the more unique, the more you can make it about what kind of comes through you instinctually, the, 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 the more authentic it's going to be. And I think that's what resonates with people. So how much improv was involved in the last deal? I love, I, I, I love the freedom to go off page. It's, it's a lot of fun for me. Um, yeah. This is my <laughs> wife's friend. She goes, Hey, did you memorize the whole script? I go, memorize the whole script. <laughs> She goes, yeah, that, that's what I heard the actors do. They memorize those people. I'm like, oh my God, am I, oh man, I'm, this is a, this is going to be a tragedy. And then I remember, <laughs> I remember calling John, I was like, hey, I don't have to memorize those script. He goes, no, you should have the most script memorized. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh, oh the, how am we going to pull this off? I'm like, how, wait, wait a second. We're not going to shoot the whole script in a one Yeah. Like, I mean, it's impossible. So Anthony, just take it one day at a time. I mean, like, you know, the story inside out, just take it one day at a time. So like, I, I really enjoy kind of going off page, but again, you got to read the room who this guy is. Like they love it on page. And sometimes the writing is so like, ideally the writing is just so tight 
that you get that nice tight one that works. And then they can say to you, Hey, we got it. We have the time. What do you got for me? I mean, mm. so, so, cause it might be something in there that I think is genius and I'm just not seeing it yet. I had like, so that's where it's fun to be the cre- an artist, like splashing some colors on there, like the glasses and so forth to yeah. kind of, you know, enrich your characters. Like I said, the splinters are so special in this business. I feel like you and Jonathan finding each other is just perfect. I feel like you guys like just work together so well. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I mean, just, <laughs> I just wrote a list yesterday. It was like, I was listening to some guy and he's like, hey, you know, people that you're opposite are a reflection of you. So like, know that like the things that you want to improve in your life, look for like some people that uh, are some of the attributes that you're trying to be, imp- that you're trying to improve in your life. So I wrote down these things and I was like, oh my God, this is Johnny. So I put Jonathan's name on like, this is a person that I want to surround myself with more. I mean, he's focused, determined, committed, confident, well-spoken, communicative. And I mean, he has a lot of grit. You know and I mean, and he completes the task. He's one of the few guys that I've kind of gone and done these things where like, I'm going to make a movie. And guess what? He made a movie. Yeah. <laughs> there's like, there's so many stories that you hear these guys and they just go out there and nothing, yeah. nothing, there's no results. Yeah, and it's doing well too. Like this is like the last deal is doing really good. Like got a theater run. Yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's awesome. Like yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're lucky that we got the private screening. Honestly, it's we're, I was so I was like hell yeah, let's fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Like I mean, yeah, it's coming out February third. You know what I mean? It's gonna be in like twenty one cities across the country. Yeah, and uh, we're super excited about that. And then like not even a week later, it's gonna be available on VOD. That's so cool, we're. Yeah. We're um yeah we're really excited. I mean we're we're blown away. I mean I think you, you try to have no expectations. You just take it one step at a time. And watching this film unfold the way we did, it was really right. when we saw the trailer. He came back and showed us the trailer on our reshoots, and I was just like, "What? Oh yeah. my god!" I was like, "Did we do all that? I don't remember there being <laughs> any guns in here. Holy cow, that looks great. <laughs> this is a movie I want to actually see. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, I was like, hey, do we, what do we have to do to get this completed? He goes, well, we got to get a little more money and get that and that. And so that's yeah. immediately what motivated a lot of us to kind of just make it happen. And yeah. that, we, well, that, was, that was one of the things I'm going to, like as a preface to my next question, that was one of the things that surprised me. I'm like, he's just standing in the doorway and it still looks really good. Like, how does he make <laughs> that look so good? He's just standing in a corner somewhere. It looks at it. It's like, oh, what's going on? Um, but so that that was a big surprise for me. What when you first watched it? What was did you? Is there anything in the movie that maybe your performance surprised yourself or anything that surprised you first watch? I was surprised that it was as it was as good as it's gonna be. I, I'm a very heavy critic. I, I have a very hard time watching myself. And in most of the movies that I've been in, I've kind of always been like, oh, that was terrible. Like even, mm-hmm. the, even the the fighter, the town, like all like every time that we went through those screenings, and my wife's next to me, and my wife is an amazing critic and very <laughs> she was, has very good taste, obviously. And then uh, she she uh, she's like, "That was good." I go, "No, no, that was terrible." I was like, "Come on, look at there was no love line there. There was no connection between the characters." I was like, "I don't, I just don't." I did, my performance, was, oh god! And, but the more I see him, the more I start to realize, like. Well, it's also nice when you get a lot of noms too. And you're kind of like, oh my God, that was really good. Mm. You know, you're just, you're just too hard on yourself. I was like, so it's hard for me to watch some of the stuff that I'm in. I'm just so heavily critical. But this one, I was like, oh my, I was like, this actually makes sense. Like this, is, this is watchable. <laughs> and I was like, if I'm saying that out of the gates, that's, that's, uh, that, this might have some legs. Yeah, so yeah. I was, uh, I was, I think the answer, the long make it, the long answer is like, yeah, I think I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I don't know how, yeah, really kind of the pace. Johnny did a really good job with the pace of it. And like, it was like, boom, it was done. I was like, wow, that was, that was like a popcorn popper. I was like, you could have ate a popcorn and all the way through it and not even finished it. And it would have been over. And it was great because it moved. The pace was very fast. Which yeah. Was great. It, it never, it popcorn. never slowed down. It was always at the same pace. Yeah, it was a good pace. Yeah. And is there anything that uh, down the pipeline that you're looking forward into, like auditioning for something that you'd want to happen? Like, what do you, what do you want for the future for yourself? Just a good balance. You know what I mean? A really good balance of like, like being able to creatively go and express myself and play and, mm-hmm. and inspire through like movie making. Because like leaving the classroom was 
really challenging for me because I knew I was making a difference in these kids' lives. So like my whole goal from day one moving out here was to um, was to just like inspire on a much larger scale through the the, the art of storytelling. So I think that that I mean that's that's my overall goal and it's continued to be my overall goal. And that's kind of what I'm up to is I'm just trying to become more of a filmmaker and just and through that to inspire people, move them. Did you ever think about making your own films, like writing or anything? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure it'll. Uh, I mean. Yeah, there's always like, there's a lot of funny things that have happened in my life. And like, it's amazing <laughs> if you do some of the things opposite of what everyone tells you to do, like work really hard and, and yeah. like, and like, and think really hard. And like, but I've kind of found out like, you know what? Sometimes if you just kind of don't think so hard and, and let things just kind of naturally come to you, mm. life has a really funny way of delivering the life you want exactly the way you want it and um so i yeah I, I think i just try to practice like like just not thinking too much and just kind of being in the moment and and it, with little simple things it was just kind of like just gratitude yeah and, and humility and and so like i think balance would be like that would be my kind of overall goal is just that have a nice family life recreation life work life i mean like health life yeah and i, I it happened to me yesterday. I had this big thing going on right now and I'm like in the process of, yeah, putting together something and, and I just got up out of my room and I just left to go to the beach and I just, I did me time and the, immediately got the phone call that I'd been waiting for for weeks. And I was like, mm. Oh, got it. Universe telling me you got to take care of you a little bit more. You, you're putting, you're working a little too, you're bound, you're unbalanced. So once mm. I went and did something for myself recreationally, it's just saying like, yes, this is right. That's a, that's what I hear. I hear the universe telling me like, yeah, this is right. You're on the right track. Keep doing stuff for yourself. Balance your life off, and all the other stuff will come effortlessly. Let me get a little esoteric on you because I, I talk about stuff like that all the time. Um, like my girlfriend says it to me all the time. A lot of my peers say it where it's like, oh, you gotta. It, it's the energy. It's the universe. It's talking to you. It's it's not what not affirmation. What's the manifestation? What whatever it is, whatever you believe mm -hmm. in. How, because I'm, I don't know what to believe, right? But how much of that, especially as an artist, does that have, like, wh how much of it is in your life where it's like manifesting or believing or saying, finding the balance? Like, what's your relationship with I that? I did this part on everything, everywhere, all at once. I was I in the middle. Movie. I was in the middle of, uh, thank you. It was, yeah, it was. It was it's like, what a good movie. Yeah, it was great. My sister. I, you could watch, you could watch it. Like, yeah. I have only, I, it got so much better the second time I watched it. Yeah. The first time I was like, Whoa, that was a lot to handle. And then the second I was like, oh, that was genius. And so then I'm like, good. I still miss so much more. I could watch this 10 more times and appreciate it, I'm sure. I'm getting yeah. goosebumps just it's thinking. It's so about. good. My sisters came home the other day and they're like, we finally watched it. We finally watched it. And then they were talking about how awesome it is. And then I was telling them that I was interviewing you. And then I was scrolling through your IMDb. I'm like, holy shit, he was the guy whose head got exploded with the confetti so and everything. Good. They're like, no way. It was nuts. <laughs> it was the craziest yeah. audition. I thought I was being punked when I got the audition. Oh, man. Like, I'm like, I'm reading it. I'm like, is, that, is somebody trying to get me to film? Wait, is this is this animated? They were like, <laughs> you have a raccoon on your head, and he's pulling your hair, and you're stuffing it. I'm like, is this ratatouille? Am I? Is this am I ratatouille? <laughs> am I? Thinking, what am I? What's going on? Is my buddy's trying to get me to do something, and they're gonna throw it on TikTok? Is I'm like, yeah. I don't know. So then I go, oh, well, it's a weird audition, the craziest one I've ever done, but I'll do it. So I just did it, and then I ended up getting the cop confetti pot. And then I got, I, when they told me the dates, when they booked me for the dates, it was during my trip to Esalen. This is a really beautiful spot up north where I kind of go for my, like, me time. And I was, like, doing this workshop class, and I knew it's, they probably wouldn't let me go. But I was like, hey, you know what? I know the coach. I'm going to ask her if I can leave for one day to drive back to L.A. to do this shoot and then drive back up and then come back to the workshop. She goes, yeah, you can. So I was in the middle of this really cool it's called five rhythms like workshop class and in the middle of it i go and it's probably i really enjoyed my performance on that which is rare for me to say and i feel like back to what you're saying that space of really like this transformational or, or self-growth space that we mm -hmm. talk about i was at the epitome of it, at esalen in that space you know like no drinking, no drugs, it's spiritual, meditate, you know what I mean? Get one with nature. We're going to dance this out. We're going to, it's therapeutic. And then I go in the middle of that kind of a space 
to do this part. And it's one of my favorite performances. And I, I like, that's the space you get to thrive for. Like this living, this type of living. And it obviously, and I'm just going based off of what works for me because I'm just observing my own life because this is what works for me. So it might not work for other people, but I just saw it bring out the best in me. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm on track for that. I'm doing, I just signed up for this heroics class, amazing class that's out there, this app. And it's been like for the last 30 days, I've just seen unbelievable results with just such little time of just doing little things and every what is day. That? What's the heroics thing? What is it? It's like, it's, um, it's an app that this guy started, uh, brilliant app. Really, it's going to take over the world. It's called Heroic. It's, uh, it's got this other free app called Optimize. And it's basically, it's just like, uh, it's everything that we're kind of like talking about in that transformational world of being the best person you possibly can be. And that's through like, yeah, like practice and like practicing it and knowing what it is that you're going to practice. And uh, it's, uh, it's free, Optimize is free with all this unbelievable content. And then Heroic, the, the app itself, is more of like when you want to apply the things to make you the best man. Like, so every day, like, you know, like doing a kind act. I mean, being humble, writing in your gratitude journal, doing 20 burpees, walking over 10,000 steps. Like they just kind of like check, check, check. And it gives you a checklist to kind of like, oh yeah, I hit these. Okay, great. I reached my goal today. Great. And do that long enough and see what kind of results you get. It's like, it's a recipe for success. I feel like, um, this is a side note while you were talking. So right now we're talking about like feeling like inner peace and stuff, but it's so funny because while I was watching The Last Deal, the, the only introduction to you I like really, the biggest introduction to you I had was The Last Deal. So I'm like, oh man, I'm like kind of intimidated. I'm going to come on. This is going to be like a drug dealer. It's like, no, it's obviously not. So I'm talking to you now about like exercising and like loving life. It's just so funny that like I had that in my head, you know? It's the crazy thing. Bill thinks I'm, Bill says it in multiple ways. You're like, he's the nicest guy on the planet. And I'm just like, and like, I do this crazy scene in Barry, right? Yeah. In season three, I'm just choking her out. And it's sick. It's a sick scene. It's a very intense scene. And they loved it. And we had to do ADR. Well, it was very, and the, and the editor, I go to my ADR and I open up the door and there's like 10 people in there. There's usually only like two or three people. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Am I getting fired or what's going on here? <laughs> and they were like, hey, we came down with the editor because she was so scared to meet no. you alone. So the six of us walked her down here because everyone is trying to tell her you're the nicest guy in the world because ever since she edited that scene, she's been a little disturbed by what happened. And we wanted her to meet you just for like a little bit of therapy on her end. And I'm like, oh my God, of course. And I was like, saying hi to her. And she's like, oh my God, they're right. You are just the nicest guy. And thank you so much for meeting me. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. Thank you for bringing this compliment to my table of mm -hmm. saying that like, now my performance moved you that much, even if it's not even a positive, but I, I just want to move you. I just want to move you. It's all about moving. If you can just move, we're, we're all, we're all going to be okay. Mm. Well, maybe something to think about. Cause when I was watching the last year, like the way you kind of th like shoot glances at people, I'm like, this guy would be per, he has like the perfect face for like the guy who plays it straight in like some kind of comedy or like an ever, whenever a character says something stupid, you give him like one of those, <laughs> like one of those like hard gl glares. That'd be very good. Yeah, so it's a note for the future if you're ever <laughs> looking to do a comedy. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, Bill, even J Johnny thinks I'd be a great bad guy. He goes, man, you'd be a great bad guy. Yeah. And I was like, wait, I wasn't the bad guy in the last deal. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, the, 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 the Barry thing with the playing the bad guy over there, you come to find out that a lot of the guys – who play really good bad guys are the nicest guys in the business. Mm. It's so funny. I wonder what that's all about. When when you um or like when any scenes that you do, what what seems to be the hardest way to act? Is it is it comedic? Is it drama? Is it even if you haven't done it on screen, if you've just done it with yourself or like in a class, like what's the hardest thing for you to do? I mean, I uh, um for sure singing. Okay, <laughs> that makes that a lot of sense. Never happened. Like that's like, yeah. <laughs> um, I would. I guess I'd say comedy. Right? It's so funny because like when I was doing the Barry stuff, he would laugh so loud after he'd say cut. And like, and I'm like, wait, I'm not trying to be funny, man. I'm trying <laughs> to be kind of serious about this. And they just found it to be so funny. So I, I don't know if that even, I, I must have some sort of act for comedy because they think, I mean, those guys would laugh so hard on some of the stuff that I did. And I was like, I don't know if this is a good thing, guys, because I'm really not <laughs> looking, I'm kind of going, yeah. I'm going at it like, knife and you guys are coming out laughing but uh yeah 
I, I guess right off the back, I would say, yeah, probably comedy. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Everyone, And I believe it. Comedy is hard. Because in, in drama, it's like, it's, not, it's, it's kind of shitty to say, but most people have probably gone through a lot more horrible scenarios than like really funny scenarios. So it's like, I can recall back those like, those rough memories and, and go through this scene. But it's like, to act like something's funny that somebody wrote that I've been studying for like, pages and pages and pages mm-hmm. like that's i feel like that demands well, a lot you know well like you see a lot of actors you see a lot of comedic actors like thrive in like serious roles but i feel like you don't see a lot of serious guys thrive in like yeah, comedic roles it's hard it's, 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 it's hard, hard. yeah, yeah. I had very few and that's why i thought tom hanks growing up as a kid was a genius because he literally and even like some of the other guys have all tried to do it, like the little fat way like you 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 can make people laugh okay great but he'll never be like the Denzel Washington with it's like the true drama. Yeah, I guess so. Like yeah. leading man. And yet look when Tom did Philadelphia, it was like you were like, oh my yeah. God, he's the real deal. Yeah. I mean, this is it. He's going he's no more bosom buddies. This guy is like he's yeah. the real deal. That's what uh, it's funny yeah. you mentioned bosom but my dad I remember my dad says I remember watching Tom Hanks on Bosom Buddies being like this guy is going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> he was just completely wrong. Oh that's so funny. Yeah. How do you feel that you're 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 doing it? Like this is it? Like you're 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 fucking doing it, man? Does it feel good? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I'm just hungry. I'm just looking at this mountain in front of me, and I'm just excited to climb it. I'm just excited to discover. I mean, like, it's what's great is that my business is about imagination, and that's like the most powerful thing I think that there could possibly be because there's unlimited space and imagination. So, like to me, I'm super excited. Yeah, super excited, awesome. and um. And grateful, like just really grateful that like can make a living off of like creatively playing and doing something that you, it's all about doing something you're passionate about. And right now it's just that I'm passionate about it. And when you're passionate about it, it doesn't, it's like, it almost doesn't feel like work. I mean, as, as hard as it is and as challenging as it is, there is like, you just, it, the passion just helps me dig down deeper to do whatever it takes to get it done, to stretch and like, yeah, it's it's the passion that really drives, makes creates a lot of grit. Yeah, uh, I have some rapid fire questions uh, for you before we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, the first one is as a, st- a stunt man aficionado and very accomplished stunt man. What's the most impressive stunt you've ever seen or been involved with? Uh, oh, for me, hands down, it was getting married. He he could be a comedian. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he could do comedy. comedy. Perfect. He could be co- he could do a comedy. <laughs> yeah, it was like I mean, come on, man. Like, <laughs> here, you, here I was, like I'm like, I mean, we grew up like, yeah. I mean, we were a very rich family because of love, but we were like, we were on welfare. You know what I mean? We were like, we were always struggling and everything that we did financially and. Uh, it was like Italian, Irish, Catholic kid from middle class Worcester armpit of Massachusetts. And then I go out and I meet like my Jewish, Iraqi, Beverly Hills princess. You know? wow. <laughs> and, I was, and I'm like, get out of town. <laughs> I didn't think that was I, I just fell in love with her when I saw her. I didn't know who she was. I was like, get out of here. Wow. I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought she was Latin. I was like, she had these little kids running around. I was like, I don't even care if she has kids. I just need to meet that girl. Wow. And yeah, when I got, when we went to the restaurant that night with a group of us, because we we're all at this graduation where I met her and she stood, sat opposite me. I was like, oh my God. And she's like, I heard you say that. I said, yeah. And then in my mind, I said, I'm going to marry this woman. And I was like, I can't believe it. And I haven't even spoken to her yet. And I said, hey, my name's Anthony. She goes, I heard you say, oh my God. And then you said, hey, my name's Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that was it. I was like, I didn't know who you were, or where you came from, but I was just in love. And then that's what life presented to me. Wow. Like this amazing, like very different cultures, mm. like especially for her. She wouldn't introduce me to her family, which was very foreign for me because like usually girls love introducing me to the family. I'm usually like, I don't want to meet you. Instead, I was like, why aren't you introducing me to your family? What's going on? And she goes, it's a very sensitive subject. Uh, you know, the community yeah. doesn't just let outsiders in that easy. I got to do this in a very clever way mm. so Fine. and then i remember calling her brother i was like hey man i love your sister i, I want to take it to the next level he goes listen i'm not saying that it can't be done it's been known that it has been done but very few times but let me just explain something think about the word commitment multiply that by about a thousand 
And that's what it's going to take for you to get into this family. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> he goes, but don't let me discourage you. Like I said, and the person that I do know, the one guy that I know that broke into the family, he was Italian. So you got that going. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's right. funny. That's excellent. That was a perfect yeah. answer. Yeah, that was a perfect <laughs> answer. What's the worst? Did not expect the, that the hardest at all. stunt. It's like, let me tell you wow. a story. Uh, what's another yeah. rapid fire question, John? Uh, what are some of your the most influential movie? Your most influential movies that you've seen? Oh, oh man, I love Cinema Paradiso. It's like I don't know why it warms my heart. Um, I, I mean, but then I love Forrest Gump. You know, what I mean, I'm mm. like a crazy, and, and I love like I mean. I love the book of life and I mean, like, I, I love, I, like, I, I love, um, what is, I, I don't know. I'm not thinking too well right now. I'm just kind of throwing stuff out there, but yeah. Oh, my wife made me watch gone with the wind one time. Oh, that was <laughs> She's like, I, I forget. I think we took mushrooms or something. And she was <laughs> like, and she's like, you got to watch gone with the wind. I go, ah, I'm not watching a musical. And she yeah. goes, it's not a musical. I go, what do you mean? It's not about so long farewell. She goes, no, no, no. It's a sign of music. Because Gone with the Wind is is a classic American movie. I go, well, bring it on. And we and she fell asleep. And I watched the whole thing. I think it's like six hours it's, or something it's like, like four, that. It's yeah, it's four hours. So maybe that's the is kind it, of commitment I, that they were looking yeah, for. Yeah, that's the commitment. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I was took forever, and I was like, this is genius. What a great <laughs> movie. Who does this? And my wife is amazing. She like, she loved. Loves, 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 loves the theater. Loves act. Loves the art of movie making. I know nobody. She knows everybody. Mm. Like it's it's great. Yeah, we're it, it, I, it was a, it was a, it's the best. Yeah, it's my yeah, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. It was the craziest thing I ever went after, the hottest stunt I ever pulled off, but had the greatest rewards. Yeah, yeah. We Excellent. got three kids now, beautiful family, and we're just yeah, just trying to enjoy them. Yeah. It's great. Do you have another rapid fire? Well, I've yes or no, just answer. My dad ha- made me a- ask you this because as a fe- as a stunt man, my 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 aunt used uh, her ex husband is a guy named John Dixon who's also a stunt man. Do you know him? Oh yeah, John's great. Oh, oh yeah, no really? Way. That's, that's, that's wow. hilarious. Yeah, the community is not very big. Like yeah, John's fantastic. I used to look. What's what my favorite part of John's attributes were his look. He has this unbelievably deceiving look of like being like this really like amazing athlete. He looks like just your average Joe guy. Inside. And I used to love that about John. I was like, he has the greatest look and yet he's just opposite of what's looking, which is just, a, he's just an amazing athlete. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, John, yeah, he super talented, great look, great guy, entrepreneur. I mean, he, he's helped out the business a lot. Yeah. That's funny. It's, it's, that's funny. I can't it's wait to so tell my funny. parents. It's gonna be funny. That's so awesome. Um, and last question. I, we looked in your, uh, when we were looking through your IMDb, it says you were, you were in Oppenheimer and you were talking about that. If I know Nolan might have a laser with a gun point at you right now, if you say, is there anything you could say about your experience on that movie? Cause he's very secretive about his movies. Uh, just that it was like, it, it felt exceptional. Mm. You know what I mean? It just, it felt like something. And I usually don't get those feelings, but like it, it felt exceptional. It felt like something was something really special was going on. Yeah. The lead. I mean, it was like the look, the, yeah, you, you know, very little, but that was the, that's the best way I could explain it. Like the energy that I got out of there was like something exceptional is happening right mm. now. Uh, we are so excited for that movie. We cannot wait. It's yeah. Crazy. It should be cool. Yeah, man, I'm so excited for you, man. I, I, you're fucking, you're fantastic. I'm like, the first thing, when Johnny came over, he was like, what do you think about the movie? And we were talking back and forth a little bit, and then one of the first things he said is like, that like you can definitely carry a movie on your own. And I think it's going to be, I really do hope like you get more like uh, leading roles or, or roles where you have a lot of screen time, because I, I think, well, Johnny and I agree that like, you have it in you and you and you know you know you have it in you you actually know that because you so people have told you that oh you got the talent people have told you that you can do it and people keep telling you oh do this do that do that now and you're like ah you're slow but you're you're doing it every single time someone yeah. tells you you get involved and you're actually doing it and i think that's incredible and i think everything that you're getting involved in uh keeps helping you win so i'm like bro full steam ahead man thanks man i i'm just you know what i'm just putting it out there and it just kind of keeps falling in front of me and i and i'm just like Bless, you know like yeah. i remember in high school i i remember going to see my guidance counselor at times like he goes what's the matter i can tell him i was like i was like i don't know what i want to be when i grow up man this is really messing with my brain i feel like i should know what i want to be and he goes 
it doesn't matter. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, it doesn't matter. Anthony, you can be the janitor of a school or the president of the United States. You're going to do it great because whatever you put your mind to, you're going to be successful at. That's You have that. That's what you got. So don't worry about mm. anything. Just know that like whatever comes up, whatever you decide to do, you're going to be great at. Teacher, stunt guy, actor, director, you know I mean? producer, you got this. I mean, it's just a matter of like doing it. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna include that in the actual episode. That speech you just—that's the opening. There. That that'll be the opening. That'll be the opening. Oh. That's awesome. Oh. That's perfect. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we're recording. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 one I more. Stop by a while ago. <laughs> like, oh man, we didn't get that. <laughs> That's funny. Um, you guys, obviously veterans. <laughs> what, one more selfish question before we let you go. Do whatever you you got to do for the rest of the day. Um. When it comes to, and I'm not, I'm not gonna ask like the, the you know, age old, like how do you get started? Because at this point, it's like we, we heard your story, and um, I also was like, okay, well maybe you know, do some small jobs, get a, get a backstage, talk to people like Jonathan, talk to people like Anthony, do make short films. But is there one thing that you did, even though you told us that you went to your class, is there one thing that you did where it's like this, really helped me get into this industry? What oh, yeah. is it? Well, I, you know, I, I, something else is kind of coming up for me, but like it's along those lines. And it was what Johnny said at the beginning of this when we started filming The Last Deal. And he was like, he goes, if there's one little bit of advice that I could give you, he said, try to make this relatable to something that's going on in your life right now. He goes, so for me, I want to share with you, Anthony, that right now, like to me, this movie is kind of my last deal. Like my direct, like I, I've done enough of these now. I've got someone to, and nothing's really popped. So if this one doesn't go, this is the last deal for me. As <laughs> wow. So I was yeah. like, oh, whoa, whoa, that's great. Okay, yeah, let me see what I can find. And I think finding those things that are going on in your life, because it's the movie is there for, like things don't just come up by accident. I mean, mm. there's a purpose for everything that comes up in your life. And I felt like, okay, there's, if there's a purpose to this movie and you playing Vince in the last deal, what is it and how does it, relatable to you and th and that helped me i think that's probably the advice i'd give is like find things that are that that you can create in your life that you see relatable in your life mm. yeah yeah well thank you so much for hanging out with us it was awesome i mean like you are so easy to talk to you know you're you're com perfect um also oh, appreciate that. yeah of course also um i think is it the third or the fourth that the last deal is coming out the, the third. third the third yeah, the that's third. The Friday, yeah, February third. Yep, yeah. we. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's in S Santa. I'll Santa put Bob. I'll put everything on the screen. So oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, er everything is gonna go up on the screen. Everything's gonna go in the description. Um, also, is there anywhere that we can find you? I'll also put it in the description. But like, where where what are your socials? Where, where can we find you? Oh my god, I'm terrible oh about that god. stuff. I don't, I don't I'll, put, like, I'll put it in. I have, so a, I have a Facebook account, but I mean, like, <laughs> I, I mean, I just. I, everyone keeps telling me, no, man, you got to get on that. You got to get some followers. I was like, I don't want any followers. I don't want people yeah. following me. Why would I want to follow? I don't even know where I'm going. Why do they want to follow me? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what are you talking about? I feel like but, that's yeah. honestly every act. Like, like what? It's like Jake Gyllenhaal got an Instagram for the first time last year. Like, all, oh, almost, really? Yeah, like he doesn't want to. All, he, he's like an amazing actor. But he has he wants nothing to do with like the fame, which is actually really funny. I like um, when they delete yeah. their social media. Yeah. They're like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. <laughs> Um, but we'll but, share your IMDb yeah. and everything, of course. Um, is there anything else? Uh, no, just, you know, thanks for talking to us. It was really awesome. Like I asked you what your, some of your most inf influential movies are. One of mine is the fighter. Cause I've seen it a million it's times. Really so it was awesome man. talking to you and I'm glad to see you as a leading man. And I hope that trend continues for you. Yeah. Yeah, man. You, oh, Johnny, you man. Thanks a lot. That means a lot, brother. I, I, yeah. Like, thank you for the kind words. That's really cool. I, that means a lot. Thank you. Um, stay on the line. Cause we want to do a little bit of, uh, debriefing but otherwise that's it so guys thank you so much for watching you can catch everything in the description below um imdb you can check out the um last deal we're gonna put everything down there and that's about it thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one peace <laughs>